Hey guys, it's Jasmine doing something a little different today, almost like a little bit of a casual storytelling. Here are 10 interesting traditions around the world that are still practiced today. Number one, Obon or Bon Festival from Japan. The Obon Bon Festival or Urabon is one of the most well-known and popular events in Japan and is the Japanese festival for the spirits of the dead. It's a Buddhist festival which has been celebrated for over 500 years and originates from the story of a Buddhist disciple named Maha Morogariyana, who used his powers to see the spirit of his deceased mother. He made an offering and released her from her suffering, and he danced with joy and this is where the tradition of the Obon dance comes from. It is now celebrated for three days on the 13th to the 15th days of the seventh month to honor and commemorate deceased ancestors. Traditions include paper lanterns being hung to help guide the spirits, obon dances being performed, visiting the graves of deceased family members, and making food offerings at altars and temples. Many people dress up for the obon dances, which act as a cheerful affair to welcome home the souls of their ancestors. Number two, Songkran from Thailand. Songkran is known as Thai New Year or Buddhist New Year and is a festival held every year between April 13th and 15th. The festival is celebrated in Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, and is perhaps best known as the biggest water fight in the world, and each year thousands of tourists from all over the world come to experience the festivities. The celebrations often include revelers spraying each other with water guns, which is no doubt refreshing as April is often Thailand's warmest month. Some of Songkran's earliest traditions included pouring water over Buddha statues. The water poured over the Buddha statues was then trickled over the shoulders of village elders or beloved family members as a form of blessing. Thai culture holds that the water is spiritually purifying and is thought to be able to cleanse the bad luck or mistakes people have made in the previous year and bless your year ahead with happiness and good fortune. It's also traditional to spend time with family and loved ones during Songkran. Many people make trips to Buddhist monasteries to leave offerings such as food or new robes for temple monks and send prayers. Number three. Haka, a Maori practice from New Zealand. This ancient ritual dance comes from Maori legend. The dance is said to imitate the dance of Tanerore, the son of the personification of summer Hineraumati and the sun god Tamanuitera. It's said that the shimmering appearance of heat in the summer is Tanerore dancing for his mother Hineraumati. The dancer's flickering hand movements are thought to emulate the flicking of Tanerore's dance. The haka consists of people chanting with foot stamping and body slaps in rhythm. It's often men that perform this, but women perform this too. They incorporate exaggerated facial expressions into the dance, such as bulging eyes and protruding tongues. There are many different versions of haka, as haka is simply the term for all Maori dances. Haka was originally used as a war dance to unify the men and scare off the enemy. Today, a haka may be performed for a variety of reasons and serve many functions like birthdays, weddings, welcoming guests, rugby matches, funerals, and more. Number three, the pilgrimage of Rocio from Spain. The pilgrimage of Rocio dates back to the 17th century and takes place on the weekend of the Pentecost, which occurs 50 days after Easter. It's a religious celebration often involving hundreds of thousands of participants paying homage to the Virgin of El Rocio. Before the Pentecost, devotees ride horseback or take horse-drawn carriages to El Rocio, which is located 80 kilometers from Sevilla. El Rocio is a hamlet and in the municipality of El Monte in the province of Huelva. Travelers come from Huelva, Sevilla, Cadiz, and many other towns across the region to gather in El Rocio, and they sing traditional flamenco cantos and coplas in their own way. People camp along the route while traveling and create bonfires, eat, sing, and dance through the night. The pilgrimage culminates in a procession to the Shrine of the Virgin, and on that Monday morning, the statue of the Virgin Mary, or the Virgin of Guadalupe, is taken out of the shrine and paraded throughout town. Worshippers participate in jumping the fence, also known as Salto de la Verja, and climb over the altar railing to reach the statue and carry it. Number five, Dragobete from Romania. Dragobete is celebrated on February 24th and is essentially the Romanian Valentine's Day. Dragobete is a symbol of youth, love, hope, and nature rebirth. Traditionally, the day involves a series of rituals performed by young people to find love and happiness in the future. This includes traditions such as searching for flowers in the woods and dancing and kissing in front of their communities. Being alone on this day has also been considered a sign of bad luck in love for the remainder of the year. Dragobete calls back to traditional Romanian mythology, which tells the story of Dragobete, a young god who was the patron saint of love and cheerfulness. 
Dragobete is often associated to Roman mythology's Cupid and Greek mythology's Eros. He did not use his powers as a god to make people fall in love, but remind them to never stop celebrating love. Some scholars link the celebration of Dragobete to the arrival of spring, linking him with fertility and the rebirth of nature. The festival takes place less than a month before spring equinox, and some say this is when the birds begin to build their nests, trees begin to bloom, and nature comes back to life after winter. Bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, celebrated by Jewish people all over the world, but notable in Israel. The bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah celebrate the coming of age of Jewish men and women with a traditional ceremony held at the age of 13. Bar mitzvah literally translates to son of the commandment and bat mitzvah literally translates to daughter of the commandment. So the ceremony represents at once a personal independence as well as a personal responsibility to religious practice. Major traditions of the bar and bat mitzvah celebrations include the bar or bat mitzvah reading a portion of the Torah and a celebration following synagogue. Some customs have changed, evolved, or been added to, however, to the modern day bar and bat mitzvah celebrations. Like the inclusion of girls in the tradition that did not occur until 1922 when Judith Kaplan became the first girl to celebrate her bat mitzvah in the US. And in the modern day US, bar or bat mitzvah celebrations are often followed by large parties and many gifts. Number seven, Holi from India. Holi is a Hindu festival marking the beginning of spring, ancient in its origins and dating back to the 4th century where the first mentions of the celebration were recorded in a poem. The festival has mythological roots in the Hindu legend of Holika, a demon who was the sister of the demon king, Hiranyakashiya. Hiranyakashiya believed himself to be superior to all the other gods and ruler of the universe. His son Prahlad, however, followed the god Vishnu, causing Hiranyakashiya to create a plan with Holika to kill Prahlad. The plan was for Holika to take Prahlad into a bonfire and she would protect herself from burning with a magical shawl. In the story, Prahlad is saved by Vishnu and Holika is killed by the flames. Vishnu eventually killed Hiranyakashiya and made Prahlad king. And so the moral of the story is that good will always triumph evil. The tradition of the Holi festival represents the cremation of Holika by lighting bonfires the night before Holi, sometimes taking the ashes of the fire and smearing them on bodies as an act of purification. This is followed by Rangwali Holi, the well-known festival in which people throw and smear colored powders on one another. Rangwali Holi is what you might be more familiar with, and that part of the festival originates from the love story of Radha and Krishna. Krishna is depicted as having blue skin and said to have complained to his mother about the fair complexion of Radha. His mother suggests to him to smear Radha's skin with paint, hence the tradition of smearing colored powder on loved ones during Holi. In some parts of the country, festivities surrounding Holi last over a week, and it's also known as a great equalizer for Indian people. CNN reported that the festival is a time when the rules of caste and creed are briefly forgotten with everyone taking part. Prinsesdag, or Prince's Day from the Netherlands. This tradition dates back to the 18th century when Prince William V was ruled. His birthday was March 8th and was called Prinsesdag. Now, Prince's Day is held on the third Tuesday of September and is also known as Budget Day, when the king delivers the speech from the throne, officially opening parliament each year and delivers the government's plan for the year. Today, Prince's Day involves fans of the royal family lining the streets to watch the queen and king proceed in a glass carriage from Nordenday Palace to the Rittersaal, where the king delivers his speech. It's a large procession with many escorts and military personnel dressed in their royal attire and it's a big, big event with thousands of people lining the streets. After the speech is delivered, the king and queen re-emerge from where the speech is given and onto the balcony where they wave at the crowd below. And for a week or so leading up to Prince's Day, festivities continue in Princess Festival, which involves many events including the hat walk, special boat rides, and unique meals. Witches' Night or Burning of the Witches from Czech Republic. This night is rooted in pagan tradition and takes place on April 30th. It's often described as a Halloween type event where people gather to create witches out of straw and old fabric and they're sent up into flames to ward off evil and bid farewell to the spirits of winter as the summer approaches. Parades and celebrations are held, people gather, dress up as creatures, make noise, play music, dance, eat, drink, and burn witch dolls in a big bonfire. Number 10, Carnival. 
from Brazil, though it is also celebrated in countries throughout Latin America. So between the two-day festivities in Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil is home to some of the largest and most elaborate carnival celebrations in the world. Carnival celebrations are highly nuanced and localized varying hugely not only across Brazil, but all over South America. Every year, thousands of people crowd into the Sambadromi, the parade area built specifically to house their carnival festivities. Here, they'll watch the annual parade, which includes floats or many samba schools with performances by the dancers in extravagant costumes. Carnival parties filled with dancing and drinking may last for weeks, as blocos or street parties continue throughout local communities. I know that was a lot of storytelling, but I find traditions super, super interesting. And I just can't believe that those were only 10 traditions that we talked about out of the many, many, many traditions that exist. So if you have an interesting tradition you wanna share, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And remember, some traditions that may seem familiar to you may be completely foreign to someone else. So don't be afraid to share.